There have been many groups of people that have lived here in Samana, such as the Taino Indians, the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese. But the group that may have had the biggest influence are the freed slaves that came from Philadelphia in 1824. I am Martha Wilmore Johnson. I am descendant of the Afro-Americans that came down to this island in 1824. They all left from Philadelphia and they came because they were invited to this island. When the Haitians governed the whole island, they made the invitation they sent to the United States and made contact with the president in 1823. When they made the invitation to them, they said that they would have gave them here, they would have gave them land. But their contribution from the United States was to give them of their culture and civilization. The lives of free blacks living in Philadelphia during the 1820s were in constant jeopardy. On one hand, they faced the threat of being kidnapped and sold back into slavery. On the other, the American Colonization Society was organizing to send all the freed slaves back to Africa. In fact, in their annual report dating back to 1824, they estimated that all 200,000 free blacks could be sent back to Africa within the next 50 years. In 1816, when the American Colonization Society uh, organized and proposed to send all freed blacks back to Liberia while keeping enslaved blacks uh, here in the States, Richard Allen, along with Absalom Jones and James Fortin and others, gathered here at Mother Bethel with about 3,000 people in really the first uh, full-scale organized protest in the way in which we understand protest today, um, you know, kind of like the civil rights movement style. And so it was here at Mother Bethel that they organized to um, say on record that they were against the colonization society. As a free black person in America up until the end of the Civil War, you know, your position was always precarious. And so it just did not, it didn't matter. I mean, so you could, you know, you could be an established person in the community like Richard Allen. I mean, Richard Allen was the most well-known black person of his era. I mean, he was like Martin Luther King of his time, Frederick Douglass of his time, Barack Obama of our time. And so if a person like Richard Allen could almost be taken away and, you know, taken back into slavery, that, that literally said to, you know, everyday black people that, that you're really never safe and that there's nowhere that you can really go that, you know, that you really are certain that your rights will be protected. These were um, posted in the African neighborhoods. So it warned people that there were hunters who were coming to try to take you back to slavery. As you can see, it says they went as far as Massachusetts to uh, take people, some that had been slaves and had felt they had escaped to freedom, some who had never been slaves, but if you didn't have, some people carried certain papers on them, but if you didn't have the correct documentation, you could be taken back into slavery. It was these constant threats that compelled the free blacks to immigrate to Haiti, a place where they hoped they would find true freedom. They had a series of meetings um, with some of the emissaries from Haiti who came on um, Boyer's behalf uh, to talk about the opportunities that were there. Uh, one of the main concerns for, for Richard Allen obviously was that there would be religious freedom and religious liberty so that um, they would not get there and then find that the effort to you know, expand the AME church would be hindered. And so it was more than just economics and more than just about land, but it was also about this notion that the AME church would be able to grow uh, in Haiti. So while on the one hand it looks like colonization because blacks are leaving America, going to you know, work in another um, country, uh, it was different in that this was actually done by blacks, for blacks, and I think that's what really appealed to Richard Allen. A veces yo lloro porque mira, si no hubiera sido por el maltrato que se le hubiera dado a los negros hoy, nosotros no tuviéramos aquí en Santo Domingo, nosotros no tuviéramos allá. Over 6,000, 6,600 and more, the quantity, the people that came. And they came in different boats. And like how was the voyage, did you say that? Some, some voyage would remain three months. 
some less according to the weather. We have 43 saw names of the ones that came to Samana. 33? 43 saw names. Which, which like, one? Like uh, Johnson, Van der Hoes, Kelly, King, Rodney, Sidney, James, Hamilton, Mitchell, Green, Barry. So they brought the soyas, the soyas began to saw them and they soon built nice homes. But they came to brought teachers. So they had their schools and they had training for their children. When the children had no more training for hair, they'd send them back to the United States. Plenty of them went back to the United States and came with their profession. They brought single boys and girls because they didn't want for their children to marry of, me, of the people that was here. But that didn't happen altogether. They still had mixed. <laughs> they had who mixed with the, with the French people and some of the Spanish people. And when they mix, they, they, they fall out and leave the, the good part, they leave it behind. of the group of the Dominican Republic of Samana speak a little, a little English is because they miss the English. But our language was English language that was in the, in the past. Today, where we don't speak uh, real English like we should speak it, but we speak more Spanish than English. Because we have a school, all the school in the Dominican Republic of Samana now is in Spanish. Now is the time when the government is trying to teach the English in the school, but in the past, everything was in Spanish. I had to speak English in my home. Then when I be out in school and my friend out was not English, then I had to speak uh, Spanish, but when I, when I reach my home, I had to speak English. Como te informé, cuando pequeño, me, eh, como primer idioma me enseñaron a hablar el inglés. Ya fue como hasta la edad de los 5 o 6 años. Pero en lo adelante, cuando, cuando nos mudamos, o sea, mi padre, mi madre, eh, ya como que me desprendí un poquito de eso. Y me, me decliné más por el, por el español, que es el idioma que predomina aquí. Eh, ya perdí un poco la cultura de, de la inmigración de inglesa. A, a, la, a mi generación, como el idioma, que a uno no le da tanta importancia y quizá, pero entre todo, su comida y, y su postre se sigue llevando de como cultura, que uno sigue adquiriéndolo eh, día tras día, enseñándose de hijos a hijos. Hay un problema de que la costumbre que había le está haciendo falta al personaje que vive aquí en este lugar ahora porque no han asimilado el idioma que teníamos directamente que era el inglés y ahora han cambiado el inglés por el español y por lo cual ellos ahora no entienden bien el inglés ¿por qué? porque lo han olvidado. My grandfather he knocked me if I come and speak Spanish. He say I not Spanish. I English. <laughs> Don't speak to me in uh, Spanish. We have the blood of English. We don't have a Spanish blood. I am going in, in the All our blood belongs to English. Para yo ir a Nueva York, yo vivo soy dominicana. Oye, no me van a tomar en cuenta que yo vengo de esa descendencia americana. Y yo me siento ser americana. Yo me siento tan americano como cualquier americana, aunque yo no pueda ir a Estados Unidos. Porque yo vengo de esa descendencia, mira, de ahí, que son de dos americanos, de dos americanos, de ahí es que yo vengo, de esa descendencia que son americanos puros. Entonces yo no me tengo, yo me siento americano, yo me siento tan americano como cualquier americano, afroamericano, porque soy afroamericano.